I only have uh, four or five slides, so. And then maybe <laughs> you need more time for discussion. Uh, again, uh, we are facing with one of the most difficult audience and <laughs> the tough questions, I'll be, be honest with you. But uh, uh, again, uh, basically, probably I have a very similar message. Uh, MEC inhibitor probably should be tried as a baseline, and then we are looking for some partner to that. That's kind of baseline. But anyway. Uh, so this is a Jefferson version. So therefore, uh, if you go to Emily Anderson or Throne, uh, you might have a different uh, priority. But uh, the issue is uh, doctors and yourself have to think two months, three months from now on, which is going to be your major issue. So, for example, if you have a five centimeter mass in the right row, left row, and then if you go into the systemic clinical trial, and you know, most of them are phase one or early phase two, if it doesn't work, uh, it's going to be uh, very problematic. So in that case, probably if we have only tumor, maybe go to the interventional radiologist to ask them to stabilize it at least to see what's happened. And then if a liver is controlled, uh, you know, you might eventually have small lung nodule or, you know, peritoneal metastasis, and then uh, this liver directed treatment is not going to work well. So then you have a time. Or if you have big tumor in the liver and then small tiny lung tumor, and lung tumor is not going to give you any symptom for two years. So therefore, we're gonna just fix the liver first then go to the clinic, system clinical trial. That's kind of a way of logical thinking. But uh, the most difficult situation is uh, if you are diligently doing an MRI, you know, CAT scan, and then or we have a one centimeter liver tumor, and that is three or four. And then most likely, uh, if uh, even the tumor uh, does not respond to systemic clinical trial, still you have a time to go back to the interventional radiologist to fix it. So therefore, and then especially if you have a tiny lung nodule and a liver, not liver tumor, probably you go try the systemic first. Uh, you know, uh, after confirming that a doc, I'm okay for two weeks if this one doesn't work, and doctor is hesitant to say yes, but uh, most likely uh, that's a good word. <laughs> and then you try that because that is important to get the benefit. Also, try to help the other patient in the future. You know, and then give a lot of information about a cure to the cure. So that's kind of way of thinking. There's no uh, single uh, question answer to that your question, but uh, Jefferson, uh, we usually think. Uh, I also had uh, several trials with him and then other people. Uh, we also had a Jefferson only trial, so therefore I'm not uh, too much biased to the local. But uh, we do have a very good uh, colleague here, so therefore I'm always thinking as like a ditch saying, which is going to be a problem. So if I think. If uh, liver is an issue, uh, go ahead. If it's too much sick, and I hope uh, none of uh, you or anybody patient come uh, to either throne or here with a significant symptom, uh, as long as you are doing some uh, testing, uh, that's the uh, purpose of doing it. So we should not have that, but uh, if uh, it's too late sometime, we might not have to do anything. But uh, most of the case, we have you know, some chance to give something, uh, to find out something to give. And then if, uh, if it's solitary metastasis, if it's a long time after diagnosis, uh, we should uh, look into the surgical intervention, uh, if he's or not. In Europe, uh, uh, we're talking about Netherlands, uh, they have like 100, more than 100 patient liver meds, they keep cutting that. And recently they published paper, they are saying that three years cut off. We have been saying five years cut off. In other words, if tumor come back to the liver, looks like single, but uh, it's usually multiple diffuse. So on the other hand, if a tumor uh, was discovered three years, five years, 10 years, and if it's only one, uh, that might be a kind of a little bit, uh, kind of a dormant tumor, which grow from one spot. So in that case, a surgical removal or ablation sometimes might be helpful. So therefore, but most of the case, uh, we see the tumor within a couple, two years, three years. Then most of the time we see a multiple tiny dot. But uh, if uh, somebody developed a tiny solitary mass, especially in the lung, for example, uh, cutting out uh, you know, is one other option. And then the alternative is like a, a radio frequency aberration, a cryo aberration, or a focus beam, like Dr. Ned told. 
Then next question is, okay, uh, this cup come back in two years. Okay, it's multiple. Probably doctor doesn't want to touch it, uh, surgeon doesn't want to touch it. The next question is, liver is a dominant metastatic site or not? In other words, uh, if in two months from now, and that's usually a time to evaluate uh, the response after a clinical trial, am I okay or not? So if you think okay and doctors think most likely okay, you have a choice to come to the uh, systemic clinical trial. So that is theoretically good because this is hematological spread. So tumor cell may be hiding in lung and bone and you know, any lymph node potential, skin. So if you have a systemic treatment which is effective, <coughs> you should try that. And unfortunately, at, up to the time that he presented that result, there is no uh, systemic treatment which is convincingly uh, good, better than nothing. So this uh, seretinib, uh, AZD6244, it opened a new uh, era of the uh, uh, you know, systemic treatment for eye melanoma. But, and then if uh, liver is dominant metastasis, and then if you might not have a good time in two months, I think uh, you should go to the liver directed treatment first to stabilize liver tumor first, and then go back to systemic clinical trial. So if the liver, uh, domin uh, liver uh, small tumor in the liver, or lung metastasis, other metastasis uh, simultaneously growing, probably uh, you try systemic treatment first and then go back to the liver treatment. So this is, an, you know, to, to say it's easy, but a very difficult decision-making process. You know, what kind of, doc, a doctor, what kind of uh, you know, treatment a, a doctor can offer, where you live, and how you feel. You know, uh, obviously, uh, m most of the clinical trial, as well as liver directed treatment, require multiple visits. So, you know, close eyes better kind of stuff. You know, family can support travel expense, you know, there are many factors, but uh, the major issue is uh, if you go into one direction, you are okay as you are today. So that's kind of major, uh, you know, uh, key thing that you have to think. And then uh, if the uh, small metastasis, uh, you know, it's less than five, again, doctor, as Dr. Ne say, radiation might be helpful. And there's a bunch of, uh, you know, liver directed treatment, which uh, Dr. Shaman, Dr. Gonzalez spent time, but. Uh, depending on uh, how you, uh, uh, you know, or feel, uh, or doctor feel, you can just choose it. All right. <coughs> this is another headache, no? It's the same uh, picture. <laughs> but basically, summary is uh, signal keep coming in and go into the map kinase pathway, so-called, and then he did a very good job in blocking a MEK inhibitor, but the uh, reality is uh, response rate is 15%, and stabilization rate is 50, 50, 50%, some kind of, you know, uh, implement is needed. So therefore, uh, everybody thinking of what's else. And then this is a Novartis clinical trial, PKC plus MAK. And then uh, he's talking about AKT. Yeah, uh, as a, uh, with a, what? GSK? GSK, yeah. And then somebody thinking, maybe uh, Dana Faber may be thinking uh, PIC kinase inhibitor. And then uh, we are thinking of the CMET uh, inhibitor. We tried the IGF-1 inhibitor uh, as single agent, make, make a more special stable disease, but we don't see a lot of reg uh, regression. This is a MD Anderson study, but I can't tell anymore. But uh, CMET uh, single agent uh, is not going to work well. So carbodantium is coming as a system treatment, most of the time uh, stable disease, but uh, not good as a MEK inhibitor. That's a kind of impression. The one thing that uh, well, I want to just show you, uh, we talk about MET, New York MET, New York MET, okay? New York MET, M-E-T, even K, M-E-K, it's different. So, uh, <laughs> the reason why we are going to see MET, uh, paper is going to be hopefully published soon. Uh, this is uh, so-called chrysotinib. Uh, chrysotinib. Uh, it is uh, the uh, so-called CMET inhibitor. And this is uh, eye melanoma, UBI melanoma, hepatic metastasis uh, cell line that we have. And this is a growth. If it is grown, uh, it's, grow, uh, it's going to be uh, dark, uh, like blue. And this is how confluent uh, the cells are. So basically, a single agent, uh, you know, chrysotinib uh, doesn't uh, work on this cell line. 
And uh, especially if we are the hepatocyte growth factor, that is a stimulant, <laughs> ligand to see MET, MET uh, molecule, you know, is going to be uh, a little bit more confluent. Now, the MET molecule, so-called GSK212, is a so-called MEK inhibitor, MEK. So as a single agent, as uh, Dr. Kawaho responds, uh, uh, reported uh, this cell line uh, nicely respond to that, and then significantly decrease growth. Okay, so, but uh, if you are the a hepatocyte growth factor, HGF, all of a sudden this uh, growth is reversed. So that indicates that the uh, MEK inhibitor resistance may have some tumor micro environment uh, rescue uh, mechanism. So everybody looking into that, what is that? Could be some more different molecule. Uh, since uh, we start working on C uh, MET, uh, MET pathway, so we thought that uh, MET might be one of them, so therefore we are the HGF, and then this uh, MAP kinase inhibitor blocking effect is reversed. So if tumor uh, environment has HGF, even though we give a MEK inhibitor, it's not going to work because some rescue mechanism. Then if you are the so-called uh, HGF inhibitor, a uh, MET inhibitor, which is curidotinum, and then now you can reverse it. Uh, you know, here. So, so based on this, uh, we are going toward the uh, uh, CMET, MET route, as a partner of the MEK inhibitor. And again, with who is going to, which is going to be most effective? We will know. I'm sorry that uh, you might have to choose a flipping a coin and then you have to talk to the doctor. Nobody know. All data is produced in a uh, uh, mouse system, uh, in vitro system, so none of these address the issue of microenvironment. So therefore, only we will know after we give medicine to the patient. But uh, again, as Dr. Kawaho say, we are choosing the best option for the patient that we believe, so that's uh, probably pretty understand that, okay? And then a uh, clinical trial uh, we are doing, uh, in addition to what he mentioned, uh, again, this is a, a, a PKC a Novartis trial, probably, uh, I think uh, probably Sloan Kettering may start the clinical trial first, uh, earlier than this. We are going to the uh, uh, study site for the phase two. And phase one is a dose escalation, a toxicity study, so a lot of, uh, you know, blood drawing, so it's time consuming and then no efficacy is uh, proven. But uh, we have additional two treatment. One is, uh, this is a MET antibody trial. Uh, we have a one good response, one stable disease out of 12, but uh, we need improvement, same like a MEP kinase pathway, replicate. And then we are the uh, MEK inhibitor into that to see whether this improves the uh, activity with uh, some uh, tolerable toxicity. The another medicine is so-called, uh, it really has medicine which broke the MET, MET New York MET, MET and then some of the uh, function on the MAP kinase pathway. So so-called potentially a one stone, two bird situation we are looking for. This is again phase one. Bunch of, uh, you know, uh, blood drawing, you know, potential toxicity, but uh, at least uh, we will try this kind of stuff first. And then if uh, one of these uh, act, uh, you know, working uh, uh, like an uh, in vitro study, then uh, I'm going to call it <laughs> work together and start doing it. Okay, but again, always companies' business decision is involved. <laughs> so, uh, like with your support, I think uh, we are a little bit uh, better, stronger situation. Uh, there are auto awareness companies, a little more supportive, and then especially, uh, you know, Rich is uh, talking to NIH to get more medicine. So hopefully we can uh, get some kind of, uh, you know, t uh, national uh, trial sometime uh, later this year or following year. And then again, we probably don't have uh, time to discuss about this, but a uh, company called the Medio Immune want to try the uh, uh, PD, anti-PD L1 antibody for the eye melanoma. So they are finishing up the uh, uh, dose escalation study, and then they want to just treat the small fraction of the patient. And again, uh, we know that uh, anti-PD1 antibody is not so promising as expected. 
But again, uh, this uh, probably uh, give us the idea whether any uh, you know difference is obtainable. And this is a little bit different, uh, same uh, kind of more pathway blockade, but a uh, little bit different profile. So this is again phase one. You know, if we see something, we can extend the uh, patient uh, cohort like up to 30. So see, and then we got the, you know uh, some kind of. Uh, you know some information, and then uh, and if you, uh, you basically if you participate in phase one, you can go on to the next study. Basically, phase one is very early stage. So if you have any question or uh, none of these are available today, and then uh, on, uh, upcoming. So therefore, hopefully uh, by mid November to early December, at least one of these are, are opened. Our our speed is not as quick as uh, some catering so. All right, and then if you have next question, I, I hope Miriam is up there. You can call Miriam. All right, Dario, she's a clinical research manager. I think that's it. So, I guess my question is, oh, okay. Okay. Question is, since I've been on that CMAP trial with you that didn't work, does that preclude me from doing? Uh, we don't know. We don't know. Yes. And then uh, the other medicine, uh, again, may, same uh, medicine may not uh, allow you to do it, but uh, we have a different uh, medicine, oral pill. That might be a possibility. Okay. Of course, uh, make plus the PI3 kinase. You know, yeah. yeah.